The pump doesn't seem to be working right. I can't imagine why. I mean, it looks fine. Maybe it's a problem with the wiring. Let's check inside the box. I mean, this looks good. Doesn't look like it's leaking. Still, just to be sure, I think we should take a peek inside. Not, nothing wrong there. Everything seems to look fine. <laughs> Welcome to life in the country. This is what you get when you waive all your inspections. There. That wasn't so bad, now was it? If you don't mind spending two days reading about pumps and septics and leach beds and all that. The first thing that I did was made this chain tool so that I can lift and move this big concrete thing and also to lift and move the pump itself. This is my first one, so be gentle, but no, do you remember your John Dewey? I'm in the habit of making new habits, so I'm not too old to learn things. This septic tank works this way. There are two chambers. The first one comes to, I don't know, somewhere in here, and the second one goes to somewhere in there. The first tank gathers solid stuff. Now why there's two rocks here? This one is coming in right from the house, and there's a small baffle here that the baffle just stops it from getting clogged. I don't know, it's hard to explain. Read about it if you are interested. The first tank is all solid stuff and it gets like a hard layer on top that has to be cleaned by being broken apart and then sucked out with a big vacuum pump sort of thing. The second tank is in theory only for liquids. When the second tank fills with a sufficient amount of liquid, it's, in theory, supposed to trip the uh, pump, and then it pumps it uphill onto that, which is called a leach bed, where it's dispersed through a whole bunch of gravel and then dissipates, percolates, and otherwise diffuses into the soil substrate. Okay, back to this. Take a look down in. And right now what we're looking at is empty, because I just had the septic cleaned, which is why I'm doing this now. The pump was, it was killed, it was shot. So what I did was I found the correct pump and I added, I don't know if you can see, down at the bottom of the pump where it attaches in, you put a little hole so that it prevents air lock. It's just a 1 8 inch hole that allows this water that doesn't make it through the check valve to come back out and not leave an air bubble in the line. The check valve is just a really simple plunger sort of thing, which allows the pump to push water through, but it doesn't let it come back. So when the pump gets kicked on, it pushes the water up to the leach bed. Now, the pump that I had before was a wiring mess because it had a float thing attached to it that also had to, had to be wired in. This one has a magnetic activation switch, so it's already in there. So the thing that turns it on is part of this same line. It just consolidates the power lines and makes it easier. This is a separate pump, or a separate switch. It's a uh, float. It has, listen, at first I thought it was broken. Listen to this. It sounds like there's liquid in there. That liquid is actually mercury. It's a mercury switch. So you, I haven't had it set correctly yet because I'm still new to this, but when this float, pa when the water level gets high enough, this turns sideways and the switch is activated and the alarm in the house goes off. So there are two circuits here. One circuit, this one, is for the alarm and this separate circuit, this direct burial cable, is for the pump itself. Uh, cut. The lines coming out of this junction box thing, um, one of them is to the pump and one of them is to the float mechanism, the mercury switch. 
Okay, so if you saw at the beginning, there was like corrosion everywhere. So I decided to go with a completely non-metal approach. I'm not using anything metal except the fasteners that I had to. They sell these junction boxes. They're actually called um, splice boxes. And they're fancy and they're expensive. And they do make a special product just for this, but I'm not going through that much expense and I needed what I could find at the hardware store. So this is what I came up with. Uh, I made some rubber washers to suspend it for expansion. This is PVC or PEX tubing or something. And these are little tap cons that go in and it keeps the this my homemade splice box away from the wall and hopefully waterproof-ish. What are these? I drilled holes into it, and here, I'll show you. Well, first, in the hole, I put one of these, what is this, a, oh, oh the word escapes me. Oh, come on, it's not a coupler. It's one of these, it's not a coupler, it's not a reducer, it's a, a bushing, that's it. I think this is a bushing. So I put a bushing in the hole, and then with PVC glue, and then once, from the outside I put a coupler on it and glued that all together like so. So it's just essentially one part that's completely watertight. Then I fed my wires through there and just filled it full of silicone from both sides. I put it in place and silicone from the inside made sure it was secure and then the next morning I came and filled up the rest of it. Is that ideal? No. And you can feel free to crit critique me if you want, but if I were to buy these it, they were every little metal, every little grommet, rubber filled grommet thing that they had. I don't know what those are called. They always had a metal part. I couldn't find any non metal ones, and they were like $4 a piece, so you know what? I just made it myself. If it fails, I'll replace it. Okay, the wire nuts. Just put wire nuts on, then filled them full of silicone. Once the silicone was hard the next day, I duct taped them. So, yeah, you can go ahead and tell me how wrong this is, but this is what I did. Oh, the cable tidy is just a piece of rubber roofing. And it snaps around a Tapcon. Tapcon is just a brand name for big blue screw. In case you're interested, I'll share the details of this. It's called an affluent pump, and here's the specs on it. This one was the top rated one on Amazon after I did my homework, so that's the one I went with. Now, as you can imagine, that liquid down there is for the most part just some groundwater, rainwater, but it's a little bit undesirable to have on the hands. So I don't want to drop anything. The last step is to put these stainless steel screws in with the lid and I do to fasten the lid and I do not want to drop anything down there because a magnet doesn't work on stainless steel. So let's try a trick. Okay, please do not fall camera. My trick worked. I'm just af afraid that my fumbling fat fingers will drop one of these while I'm getting it started. Well, I guess maybe this trick is dumb because under this condition I could probably drop all four of them. <laughs> hey, I'm trying. Give me a break. So there it is. This is the DIY splice box slash pump replacement. The entire thing cost me everything less than $200. But I had to do it myself and I had to do some reading. But if you found your way to this video in despair and frustration and anxiety, um, it's not as intimidating or as difficult as you might think to do it yourself. This was my first one, and I tested both, and I feel confident. So, um, you know, ask me questions if you have any, and or 
you know, discuss in the comments and you can sort out your problem, I'm sure. And hopefully I'm good for another 20 years.